Welcome to this lesson of your distance learning session in O Level Geology. I am Sunday Vesmo. We shall commence our lesson by looking at the assignment that we had from our last lesson. You were told to list the elements of a geologic map. The elements of a geologic map. And so, therefore, if you had followed the lessons very well, then the element of the geologic map, as we stated or we described in our last lesson, are we have the title, which we say that it is the name of the map, which is always found at the top of the map beside the box. We have the legend, which is a column beside the map that represents the features rocks and every structure that is present in a map, the name is given there. We have the scale, which is a ratio that gives us the distance of what we have on the map and the actual distance on ground. We have the north direction, which is a reference point in the map, a reference point in locating any other feature that we have in a map. Then we also talked about conventional signs and symbols, which are the universal signs that are used to represent the different types of rocks and structures that you find in geologic map. The symbols for sedimentary rocks, the symbols for metamorphic rocks, the symbol for igneous rocks, and also the deep strike, plunge, and trend uh, signs. We have the orientation and direction, which we use to get cardinal uh, location which we use to locate features on a map that is cardinal directions use cardinal points it can be eight it can be uh, four it can be 16 cardinal point all of that so those are the different elements that you will find in a map from there now we go to uh, what Geological map is all about the different lessons that we have in this topic. Geological map. That is what you have on your screen. We have done definition and types, elements and basic signs and symbols. And so today, our lesson will be on topographic profile and Greek referencing on geological maps. One. It's not like the first geological map, but this particular lesson will be done in different, in many phases. So, the very first phase, we have topographic profile and Greek referencing on geologic maps. So, we we'll focus on the Greek referencing in geological map for the lesson of today. And the plan of this lesson has to do with the lesson objectives, the prerequisites, real life situation, Lesson activities, exercises, and assignment. For the lesson objectives, at the end of the lesson, you will be able to identify Greek reference in maps. Identify Greek reference in maps. Know the types of Greek references. Locate features on map using Greek reference. Identify the Greek reference in map. Know the types of grid reference and also locate features on maps using grid reference. That is the objectives of a lesson. So, for us to attain these objectives, we need to borrow knowledge from the topics that you have on your screen. Petrology, structural geology, and economic applied, and other topics like stratigraphy, paleontology, and also surface geology. A state company needed to identify and locate natural resources and facilitate land use in the subsurface of a locality in Cameroon. A company needed to identify and locate natural resources and facilitate land use planning in the subsurface of a locality in Cameroon. That was the situation that the company had. Now, the problem is which concept in geology you are employed as a, geolo as a geologist, as a consultant 
to provide data, statistics for that company? What is it that will help you bring about what the company needs as a geologist, a consultant in geologist, uh, a consultant of geology in that company? Is it concept of notion of surface geology, petrology, environmental geology, or geology mapping? Now, we'll continue with that at the end of the lesson. Together, we shall find out what that consultant or the different things the consultant is expected to do to have a solution or provide data to that company. So, we start with grid references. Grid references. So, on maps, we have patterns of squares that is marked with numbers that help us find exact position of features. On maps, we have pattern of squares that is marked with numbers which help us locate the exact position of features, structures, or whatever thing you are told to locate. So, every portion of the earth, of course, is present within a particular pattern or square. Those squares, we call them grid squares. And now, the numbers that are found on those lines that bring about those squares is what we call grid reference. Grid reference. Now, how are those grid reference read? On a map, we have, let's say this is a map, a section of a map. We have lines that run from north to south, north to south, and say the numbers of it can be uh, 5, 0, 5, 0, 6, 0, 7, 0, 8, 0, 9, 10. These same numbers we have them up here. And 10. Take note, these are lines that run from north to south of on the earth. North to south. And when you look at these lines, you find that they increase towards the east. They increase towards the east. It's like walking along a corridor. We call them eastings. So each portion of the earth falls within these lines. That moves north south. You can refer to them as longitudes. They move from north to south, the northern pole to the southern pole of the earth. And since they increase towards the east, we call them eastings. And now you also have the lines that move from west to east. West to east. West to east. And this line we have here. Let's say 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Remember that they'll be found on both sides. Now, when you look at this line, you find that they run from east, from west, uh, from west to east. They run from west to east. And they are parallel to the equator of the earth. And they increase from down up to the north. They increase from the south up to the north. And since they increase, the numbers, the values increase from north, from uh, the south to the north, we call them northings. It's like climbing the stairs. And so, the stairs of a house, of course. So, on a map, you find these lines, those that run from north to south and they increase to the east. We call them eastings. Now, we also have those that run from what? South to north and they increase towards the north. We call them the northings. These are what you call Greek lines. Greek lines. 
and every portion of the earth is found within these Greek lines. The Greek, these values that you find here are what you call the Greek numbers. And now, you find that these Eastings and Northings, they all intersect. The Eastings and the Northings, they all intersect forming what you call squares. For example, here is a square, here is a square. All of that, those squares are formed by the intersection of what? The Eastings and the Northings. And one of these squares is called a Greek square. And take note, we are saying again that on Earth, every particular portion, we have these lines that are drawn on the globe. And when since they are done on the globe, it therefore means that there is no part of the earth that cannot be located using the grid references. Because every portion definitely will be found within a grid square or covers some grid squares. So that is what we have. Eastings and we have northings. Take note, the easting increases to the east and the northings, they are what? You move to the north, it's like going up the stair as it is indicated on your screen. Eastings and uh, northeast. Now, how do you get to locate features on map using these Greek references? Remember, we said that these are Greek numbers. Greek numbers, a square is a Greek square. When you locate a feature using this number, you now call it a grid reference. And that reference will actually what? Take you to the location where you have that feature. So, of course, you must understand how these grid references are read. You start reading it from the Eastings. You read the values of the Eastings, then you go to the Northings. For example, on a screen, we have a map, and that map is having Greek lines, Eastings, and Northings. And so, we also have features that are present in a map, and we are supposed to locate those features using the Greek numbers. And so, how do we go about to get that? Take note. Let's start with the very first, the quarry. Let us locate the position of that quarry in the map. Now, remember we said that you start reading from the eastings, then you get to the northings. When you look at the quarry, you find that it is found after. That quarry is found after the easting 03. It is found after the beep, after is the 03. And also, you look at it, it is found after is It occupies from is from Nordin 23. So, it is actually a very big feature. So, we are going to limit ourselves to what we call a four grid reference. Or four figures because it's a big fe uh, feature. Take note the four grid reference or four figure takes also uh, a particular, a very big feature. And when you are locating a feature that has to do with a point, then it is possible to use six grid references or figures. We are going to uh, see how that is done. But the quarry is actually a big one, so limiting itself, it occupies almost a grid square. So, giving a four grid uh, figure is okay. Now, we find that it occupies the grid square after Easting 03 and Northern 23. Easting 03 and Northern 23. So, the location using grid references of the quarry will be 0323. 0323. That is it. That takes us to four figures. Now, let us locate the feature level B on 
the map, the feature level B, you find that that feature B is found occupy is found after is the 03, 02. It is found after is the 02. And now, since it does not occupy the whole of that grid square, it is a small figure. So it occupies only a small position. So you know that when we have these grid squares from one grid to another, grid line to another, there are subunits. Subunits, one to ten of those subunits. So you count from a, for example, in the case of what you have on the board, we have, we have zero, zero, we have zero, one, we have zero, two, zero, three, zero, four, zero, five, and there here should be zero, six. And for the nodings, for the nodings, we are going to have 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. And we find that our B is here. This is our feature B. Okay. How do we locate that? So, it is found after you have is thing, 0, 2, and 6, it does not occupy all of this grid square. So we are going to use a 6 grid figure. I start counting. Remember we said that between these two values, I have subunits that I can count. 1, 2, 9, 10. Then I get to that. So I have 2, sub 1, sub 2, sub 3, right up to uh, sub 9, then I get to uh, 3. So if I break this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I take it up, you find that it is found somewhere 0, 2, and the subunit is 5. 0, 2, and the subunit is 5. And now, here, 23, I move now to the easting. 0, 2, 5. I go to an easting. That is a grid of B. I go to the easting. Remember, it is 23. That is a main. 23, that's the main grid, and I have a subunit. Find that if I take it here, it should fall along 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. A subunit of 5. So, 23, then 5. So, this gives me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 figures. 6 figures. So, the location of B will be 0, 2, 5, 2, 3, 5. That is how we locate features using grid references on our maps. So, that is the animation that you have on your screen. Exercise 2. Locate the feature at A, B, and the river X on the map using grid references. Feature at A, B, and river the river X on the map using grid references. So we have, this is A. You have, that's point A there on your screen. You find that A is found directly on grid reference on the, we start, we always start taking note, we said that we start with the east things, then we go to the northern. And A is a point. It does not occupy a grid square. So you find that we have the east thing there is 10, and it is directly on 10, so it should be 0, 10, 0, and to go now to the northing, it should be 80, 0, 10, 0, 80, 0. The next will be B. B, locate the feature B. B is also a point, a small point within a grid square, so 6 grid will be Good. You look at it. B is after grid is in 10. And if you count the subunit, you find that you have up to 5. Subunit 5. So you have 10, 5, 75. 
10, 5, and 75. River X. River X. That is where River X is. You find that where River X is, it is actually what? Large. It occupies many grid square, but let us focus where there is River X. You find there, the four grid figure will be good. River X will now be occupying, you have Eastern 40, Eastern 40, and Northern 60. Eastern 40 and Northern 60. So you have the grid reference will be 40, 60 for River X. Okay, the third exercise. Locate the feature at the center of the map using grid reference. The feature at the center of the map. When you look at that map, you find that that is a feature. That is a feature that is encircled by the blue line. That is a feature that is encircled by the blue line as you have it on your map. Now, it is actually a very large feature. So, that kind of feature we cannot use a six grid uh, uh, figure. Four would be good. That is which would take us what? A grid square. Because that feature definitely if you have to Look at it in detail, you find that it occupies more than one grid square. But what is the best grid reference that we can give to that feature? You find that it occupies the grid square after 14, and that's Easting 14, and uh, you also have it above Northern 44. So the grid square at Easting 14 and Northern 44. So to put that together, we have 14, 44. That will be the four figure grid reference that will take you to the location of the feature that you have there. Eastern 14, Northern 44, 14, 44. Okay, that is it for grid references. Using grid references to locate features, structures in a map. And we are saying that there are patterns of squares drawn on map with numbers to help find exact position of features. And take note, there is no portion of the earth that is not located within a particular grid square because uh, every part of the earth is found within that. And the grid, you have the eastings and you have the northings. And you start giving grid square, you start reading them from the eastings. When you finish reading the easting, you now move now to the northings. So with that, you are able to locate features on a map. And of course, it is very important. Each time you are told to describe a particular feature in a map, you must give us the location of what you are describing. You cannot just get into description without giving us what you are describing. So, give us a position. And to locate that position, you can use grid references or you can use the uh, orientation and direction, cardinal points, all of that in geologic maps in your exercise especially in section c of your exam online level gce you all have to be working with this element to be able to locate features in your map that will be given in that section of your exam okay from there we move on to exercises and the exercise the very first number one says that you should state a company a state company needed to identify and locate natural resources and facilitate land use planning in the subsurface of uh, the locality in Cameroon. What concept, geologic concept, can be used to provide data needed by this state company? The answer should be geologic mapping. A map that shows population distribution. How is that called? A map that shows population distribution. How do we call such map? The answer population distribution, the answer should be demographic maps. And a hydrographic map, we've said that it shows the water bodies, water bodies of the earth's surface, like the rivers, the streams, the seas, the ocean, large water bodies. For solid map, it's a map that shows distribution of bedrocks, and drift map, it shows distribution of loose sediments, which are all what categories of geologic maps. Two types of maps are, we have topographic and hydrographic maps. 
Lines that run from north to south on maps are called lines that run from north to south on maps are called, of course, they are eastings. Why? They increase towards the east. And those that run from uh, east to west, east to west, and increase to the north, we call them northings. Now, the Greek references are read on maps as you have eastings before northings. And we read the eastings before we go to the northings. That is how we locate features using those Greek references. Assignment. You say by the, we say by the use of Greek reference, locate figure A, B, and D on map 3. On map, that is three marks. You have to locate. You have to locate uh, the figures A, B, and D using Greek references on the map that you have on your screen. For further verification and reading, you consult the following text that you have on your screen. We have come to the end of our lesson of the day. Our next lesson will be topographic profile and cross-section in geology maps 2. So the second phase of this lesson, topographic profile and cross-section in geology maps 